Alrighty then, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Stories Under the Moon. Now, for Stories Under the Moon, this series is gonna be about stuff I'm gonna t uh, about personal stories about me or subjects that you guys want me to talk about, and I will uh, try to draw parallels within my own life and put it within here. Um, so basically, this thing's gonna be like an advice story slash thing from me. So I chose the big heavy hitter for the first episode. It's gonna be about love. Now. What I'm probably gonna cover over this cover over this is moments in my life where I thought I felt love, or I thought I was in love, or to the moment up, up until now with my current situation. Now I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but I most likely will have a slideshow going. I do not have uh, artwork for this yet, or anything like that. So stories under the moon will go artless for this one, uh, this one episode, but it will have stuff pertinent to what I'm gonna be talking about, what I'm talking about within this video. So here you go, love. There's very, like, there's various loves out there. There's a love for your family, and there's obviously a love for a friend, and then there's a love for someone you wish to spend your whole life with, uh, like a significant other or a soulmate, per se. Now, people think love is like some kind of, kind of emotion that you feel. This mysterious emotion that no one ever feels, but yet, but yet you know when you're in love, you know what that like, when you think about it, some of us have, like, siblings or parents that we may not like, but we still do love them. My little brother, for example, like, I always, I always beat up on my little brother, we always fight, we always do whatever, but if something bad happens to him, obviously, I'm gonna feel bad and try to do what I can to make him feel better or anything like that, because if I know if something bad happens to him, that, it hurts me, too. Uh, people feel love like that, where it's just, like, you don't feel it, but, like, you know it. It's like something you don't feel, it's just there. Well, obviously this is all personal opinion with me, but I'm going off what I what I think. Now, obviously family love and best friend love are obviously going to be um, somewhat of the same thing. We could we love best friends more than we may love family or um, people close to us, depending on the situation you are. If you're someone who holds your friends dear and you choose your friends over your family or a loved one, that's perfectly understandable because of uh, companionship is a big thing. Companionship, I believe, is like a form of love, obviously. Time to time to get to the nitty-gritty, blown-out proportion by literature kind of love. <laughs> I'm talking about love. I'm going to be drawing parallels with my life and telling you guys if I've ever felt love or anything like that. Now, I've dated quite a couple of girls. Some, one or two good-looking, and some of them are halfway average, if you guys want to know. Average or below. But... Honestly, when I was younger, I started dating at a really, really young age. Well, younger than for my generation, I guess you could say. Uh, the generation now dates when they're like 12, 11, 10, 13, shit like that. But I started dating when I was around 15, uh, about to turn 16, with a girl very, very, old, very, very older than me. Um, when I was, as soon as I got into high school, a couple months in, this girl, she kind of wouldn't leave me alone. I didn't understand what the hell she wanted with me. Until one day she said that she likes me and, you know, it, it, it all hit off of there. And then we end up being in a disgusting, to toxic late relationship. Now, with Winston, when I was in that relationship, she said she loved me first, probably like a week or two, a week or two or three within the relationship. And I said it back, obviously, because if I didn't, you're going to be crushed. Right? I don't want, I don't want to make her feel bad. But... What I didn't know is that I was lying to her because obviously I didn't. I thought I thought she was cool. I, I liked her, but I didn't like. I wasn't head over heels for her. Like she wasn't a big part of my life. I didn't care for her as much as I do for the person I'm with now. Like I I honestly really didn't care. I didn't mind her. I didn't care for her. Anything bad happened to her, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, whatever. It's okay. Cheer up. And then I'll go on with my day, not even thinking about it, not having it on my mind, way on my mind, thinking about anything like that. It was just like, oh, I like you, and pretty much, <clears throat> it, it was like that. I, I love you, I said I love you, she said I loved you back, and we just continuously continued to do that, until one point where I was like, you don't make me happy anymore. I was never was happy, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I just pretty much destroyed the relationship from there, and everything just got all messed up. Now there, there's been a lot, a lot of the girls I've been with probably have to probably be around the lust area where I just wanted sex, pretty much. Like, I don't know. Obviously, when you're a, a young, a younger teenager, kind of, you you always think about that stuff, and uh, 
which girl would probably give it up to you, or how are, how am I gonna able to do this? How am I supposed to? Uh, do I really like this girl to be able to do this? Or me, I honestly didn't care. I would choose any girl. Uh, I actually choose girls with issues just so I could. They would trust me more than other girls, and I was like a disgusting tyrant when it came to love. I didn't understand what it meant. I just had sex and just went on with my life. I was like, oh, okay, up, 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 on to the next one. I was a really bad person in high school. I was a fucking tyrant, disgusting, despicable person. But, um, <clears throat> and now we're moving on to where I am now. I'm two years removed from high school. I haven't had a relationship since uh, the first semester of senior year, which probably would be like three to two years from now. Three years, two years now. But during high school, I did meet a girl where I actually, you know, I liked her. She, she was really pretty. She has really pretty eyes. She has a beautiful smile. She has nice hair. Her attitude is amazing. She's always positive. She's like, she was like my dream girl, per se. And I've only, I only talked to her for a week or two. Uh, I believe this was like junior year. And I had to stop talking to her because of uh, boyfriend issues with her. Pretty much, we would go on and off talking for a little bit. And pretty much it was like two years in the making of like these feels like there'd be times when, when I'll be like randomly like playing video games and be like, oh, I wonder how Jessica's doing. I I wish I could talk to her. I wish I'd be able to have a, a way to talk to her. Once I finally graduated high school after I got done uh, having to do that extra stuff where I had to stay an extra half of a year, I was able to talk to her sometime within the June area and I was able to talk to her and I talked to her and those feelings strike right back where I... I loved talking to her, I wanted to know more about her, I wanted to know what happened within those two years time of her being gone, of why we wouldn't talk and all this stuff. I just I just wanted to know, know more about her and pretty much I was able to talk to her for a month and then we stopped talking. And then we started picking up again sometime early September, late July and we ended up, and I ended up falling for her. I actually was able just to talk to her. Instead of being that girl that I passed in the hallway, where I gave her a high five, gave her a hug, yelled out her name, like, what's up, give me, uh, give me a hug and all that stuff. Not, not very elementary, I guess you could say, relationships were high school relationships. I was able to talk to her for long periods of time, talk about our beliefs, talk about what we want to be, talk about our dreams, talk about pretty much anything that we're able to talk about. And then I freaking, I, I like this girl. I, we ended up liking, liking one another. She ended up asking me out, actually. <laughs> uh, we've been going on for a couple months now. And all this was just like two, 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 two months. I mean, all this was like two years in the making. She thought of me, I thought of her. It was like kind of like this, 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 this crazy feels for one another. And then Katua showed you. I'm going to have to throw parallels to that. When I was playing Katua showed you. Uh, the character, Lily Satwa, uh, Satyu, Satwa, Satwa, something like that, um, she terribly reminded me of Jessica, the girl that I'm dating now, and I was like, pfft. as you guys can see, I was, I, I, I cried multiple times with that because I put Jessica within those situations that uh, Lily, Lily was in in Hisio, and I put me and her within those situations, and I cried like a baby because honestly, if that happened, I would feel terrible. I wouldn't know what to do. I would... If she she went back home, like literally, the story of Lily and Hisio are kind of intertwined with me and Jessica, where she's this girl who doesn't she doesn't come from the place where I lived and grew up. She moved here, and the fear of her moving back if things don't work out within the the reason why she moved here in the first place it freaking terrified me, and I felt scared, and I would do nothing but cry, which I I don't cry a lot, like I don't. <laughs> I, I, right there, I just felt so so vulnerable, and I cried on camera when I was reading all reading. I believe it's three times I cried in Katwa Shoju, in Lily's Ark. I just I cried on camera and just kept on chugging along. Yeah, I could have stopped and kept going, but I honestly wanted to do it because it was honest, raw emotion for me. But all this is leading up to the girl that I'm dating now. I, I started watching those uh, those playthroughs again, like Lily Satwa playthroughs, and I I kind of me me and her we say I like you. Instead of saying I love you and stuff like that, because obviously within the point in the relationship that doesn't seem like it's right to say, or the feels may not be right at the moment, but when I was watching, this is a couple days ago actually, this is why I'm bringing up this subject, I was watching a Lily 
the, my Lily playthrough of Katawa Shoujo. And I started getting into the parts where things started to get heavy, hardships of what uh, Hisio has to do when she's gone. When Lily's gone. Because in the game, Lily leaves. She has to leave. And recently, I haven't been able to see Jessica for... We're going around, going on three weeks right now because of uh, stuff with her family, I believe. I haven't been able to see her at all. And it, it sucks. I don't, I honestly think she hasn't been able to do anything recently because of what's happening, but I talk to her every day and I would love to see her and it felt like what, what Hisio was going through Lily. And when I was watching it, I started to cry because I can relate to it. I started, I, I honestly felt I felt really, really sad when I was watching my playthrough of it, and then something like clicked in me where, out of out of randomness, I was like, I love this girl. I honestly do love this girl. Why? I don't know. This is like the first time it ever happened. The first time where I, me, Luna, am like saying, I love this girl. I don't really understand it, it just happens. I don't really feel much, but like... And I started to think about it, it was like, do I really love this girl? And I started thinking deeply, deeply about me and her and how much I care for her and care for everything she does. I care for her art. I care what happens with her within her family or with her friends. I care to hear how her, her, her days are going. I care for her dreams. I care for her stories. I want to learn more about her. I want, I just want her to be like my favorite book, that favorite book that you can't put down that I don't want to... When I, I did, I don't want to put her on, put back on a shelf. I want to keep it within my, like my carry-on bag, my book bag with me, and read it whenever I want. Having it be open to me, every single time of the day, and I have no, I and I was confused at first. I felt, I felt I, at first I was like, why, why am I thinking this? Why, why, why the hell am I thinking this? Why does it take until now? What caused this? And I, I honestly don't know why. I, I think the Katawa showed you thing helped and honestly I think I am in love for the first time in my life out of the six girls I've dated my whole life this is the first time I actually felt like I was in love with one of them and I'm in love with Jessica she's my artist she's my she's my special sun pony she's she's pretty much everything to me I love her more than doing YouTube Honestly, I've been having this battling feeling if I want to still do YouTube and just give her all my time because there's gonna ha there there's times where I want to talk to her and I'm in a playthrough and I'll be texting her during the playthrough like an asshole and I don't want to do that but yet I still do it because I'm a fucking idiot I don't it's 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 really confusing but honestly I know my feelings are probably right. It's been a couple days, it's been a couple days, and every time I think about it, I, I, I say yes, like, this is true. I do love this girl. I love Jessica. And I would want to do nothing more than make her happy. And that's what led me to make this video. And I'm sure she'll be listening to it. I know she will. First time I ever felt so confused that these, what I'm thinking and what I want to say and what I want to do is real or not. If I want this girl to actually be in my life, to share the things that are hap that make me happy with her, to be able to do more things that I'm not that I'm terrified of doing. I'm not at, I'm not good in social situations, which is why me and her don't really go out that much. I feel bad for that because I don't want her cooped up in my house when we come when we hey, when we see one another. I don't want to be just stuck in my house and she could probably be doing something else more fun than just being around me, just in the house. Like I feel terrible. Like I just want to make things awesome awesome and as good as possible for this chick. I honestly think this was like two years in the making and that it was meant to happen, but obviously things aren't meant to happen per se if you believe it in the net destiny or not, and I don't believe in a destiny. I believe in making it your own, but sometimes that literature cliches creep in on me because it's what I know, but it, I don't question it anymore. I do love Jessica, and honestly, she does make me happy, so I probably have felt love once. So, okay, I think that's it. Uh, if you guys would like, um, you guys can inbox me your personal stories about if you ever felt love or not, or if you are feeling love, or you maybe you're thinking about feeling, you think you may, you may be feeling love, or anything along those lines. 
you can inbox me or put them in the comment section. It's nice to share. That's what this uh, that's what this series is gonna be about. It's gonna be a big thing about. It's gonna be me sharing my personal life with you, and obviously, you guys sharing. So try at least be okay, halfway decent with sharing. I I obviously want sharing within this um series. So I think that's about it. My name is Luna. I hope you guys enjoy the video about me gushing like an asshole. <laughs> and until next time, stay frosty.